When the nights are warm and the insects are flying, there's nothing I enjoy more than taking a walk in Central Park in the dark. <laughs> For more than 10 years, I've led groups of New Yorkers into Central Park at night for the American Museum of Natural History. We go at night because we're looking for bats, and we always find them. This is an exciting time for people like me, citizen scientists, because we have the opportunity to make a real contribution to our understanding of the natural world, not just bats, but plants and animals, rare and endangered, common ones too. All conservation begins with some kind of baseline data, an inventory of what lives where. So let's start with bats, because they are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> But what if there were no more bats? Bats face enormous challenges, everything from climate change to human-introduced pathogens and a general lack of good PR. <laughs> But what if there were no more bats? What if they suddenly disappeared? Would anyone notice? Would anyone care? Well, it just turns out that our bats our North American bats can actually eat up to their body weight in insects each night. So that is a ton of insects each evening. And other bats pollinate plants like bananas and agaves, the source of tequila and um, mezcal. <laughs> and then there are also bats that play a vital role in our tropical rainforests. It turns out that bats are actually tropical rainforest seed dispersal experts. They're all around us. They're on every continent except Antarctica. As with anything, all conservation begins with understanding some kind of status, We need to understand how many bats there are and where they are. And I'll just say that for the more than 1,300 species of bats, that work simply hasn't been completed. Up until now, in order to identify any bats in a given area, it required someone who is highly skilled, who would actually capture or collect these flying animals, Luckily, there's a revolution going on, and it's going to change the way we collect data and who can contribute. And it's all based on the phone that everyone has in their pocket. So bats are small and relatively hard to see. In fact, people mostly don't see them even when they're directly overhead. How do we conserve bats if we don't see them? Well, it turns out that bats emit an invisible beacon, and it comes pre-installed. It's actually the ultrasonic sonar that they use to navigate the dark. It's echolocation. It's their superpower. And the technology necessary for us to be able to listen to their calls is actually available on our phones. So our next task is identifying which of the more than 1,300 species of bats we're actually listening to. And this new generation of technology is actually starting to make identifications. Based on increased computing power, we're actually able to take our phones and identify which of those 1,300 species of bats we're detecting. Now I'm going to actually show you a picture of a... Actually, it's a spectrogram of an eastern red bat that was taken on my phone in Central Park this summer. So here we go.
So that is pretty crazy compared to what we previously had to do in terms of capturing those animals. You're also going to use your phone to take your findings and deliver them to a shared database, along with the necessary metadata, and in that way, anyone with an interest. And bats actually have passionate admirers. <laughs> anyone can make a real contribution. So bats. Are badass and cool, but the issues that are facing bats are also facing other animals and plants, and these are big issues. They're like global warming and pollution, and they're things like loss of habitat. And then hanging over all these issues, there's actually the danger of extinction. So facing all these issues is going to require. Baseline data collection, and the future of conservation is that people like me, who are engaged citizens, are actually going to collect that data. All of conservation depends on having access to data, but how will we get enough people? Well, it turns out that if activities are fun and interesting. People will actually volunteer. There are dozens of organizations and sites right now where citizen scientists are actually contributing to conservation, and they look a little bit like Wikipedia for birds and bats and plants, and they have punchy names like eBird. And <laughs> I naturalist. So digital collections are really the future of conservation knowledge. Can you imagine a time when your smartphone is actually going to be able to run some DNA analysis for you? A little bit of plant material, and out pops an ID. So this is Bracken Cave. It's actually in the Texas Hill Country, and the efforts of dozens of individuals and organizations have led to its protection for future generations. We live in an age when every plant, animal, and ecosystem needs an advocate. I go to bat for bats. <laughs> so pick up your phone. Pick your plant or animal, and let's conserve what we care about. Thank you. <laughs>